I was asked a couple of additional questions after the Minerva session last week, and so I'm delighted to answer them. The first one from Emily Chalker is, uh, how did you know you were ready to retire from sport and were there any initial challenges in your transition? So I, my retirement from sport coincided with my graduation from law school. I made my first Australian team in 2005 and um, then I competed in, I started university in 2007 um, and I swam my last Paralympic Games in 2012 and graduated from law school at the very start of 2013. Uh, so I felt like while I was competing, I could balance university Law school is, I mean, obviously it's, there's a huge amount of reading and it's intense, but it's, it actually doesn't have the contact hours that other degrees do, like, you know, medicine or physio. Um, I have friends who did those subjects or pharmacy, you know, lots of um, courses have really full-time contact hours, like architecture, all those sorts of degrees, it's sort of nine to five every day in a classroom. Whereas I think for law school, we had like 15 hours a week in class and then outside of that it was all about reading. So I felt like I I had a lot more flexibility with my time, which meant that I could train early in the morning and late in the afternoon, which is possible with swimming and you know go to university during the day and still do all the readings and things. Um, and I think it, it, it kind of became apparent, I didn't know that London was definitely going to be my last competition, but it became apparent to me that it was going to be really hard to manage work and swimming and particularly the work in the way that I wanted to do it. I wasn't really interested in doing part-time or, um, or reduced hours. I kind of felt like my swimming career came to a natural end. I'd competed in two games and I'd been on the team for eight years and I, I kind of felt like it, it, it just felt like the right time. Um, I worked in, I worked in mergers and acquisitions at a big law firm. Um, and I, I didn't feel, you know, I was working long hours and then I, for a little while I tried to get up and go to swimming training, but I just felt like it was kind of a natural end, I suppose. Um, sorry, that's a long-winded way of answering the first half of your question. Um, the second half, were there any initial challenges? At the beginning, I didn't really think so. Um, right after the London Paralympics, like literally the next day, I went to Washington DC and did a six-month internship uh, for a sports agency and a senator. And then I came back to Australia and, and uh, basically started at Allen's, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later. So I felt like, oh, you know, I've got all these new routines and structures around the place. And, and so I sort of left swimming behind and it wasn't that tricky. But over time, I realized that I actually, the, 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 I don't know really how to describe it, but it's the, I felt like I really missed the connection with sport. It's such a huge part of our lives that it felt strange to have nothing to do with sport anymore. And I almost felt like, I don't know, almost like it was such a shame that my day-to-day -day work in M&A couldn't really draw on any of the stuff I'd done when I was a swimmer. I, I, just, I, I felt like over time I realised how unsuited I was to a big corporate law firm Um and how much I still wanted to be involved with sport. And so I think that that period um, at Allen's, while it was wonderful for my, you know, development as a junior lawyer, it it was actually a really hard period because I wasn't super happy um, with the work that I was doing. I, I And I think a lot of that came from the fact that I was, I, that was my hard transition out of sport. I had no connection to sport anymore and I just sort of felt a bit, I guess, sad. Um, but I didn't realise that until a little bit down the track. So I think it's inevitable when you retire from your sport that there will be, even if you have all these, like I had, I had structures set up in place to sort of ease the transition into my post-sport career. Even if you have all of that stuff, it's still not going to be easy. It's certainly better to transition when you have structures and routines and something to look forward to and something to do every day and get up for and seeing people and all that sort of stuff. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to feel the feelings that come with ending a sporting career. Um, and actually I heard, 
I think it was Susie O'Neill who said in a documentary that you almost have to divorce the feelings, the highs of competing with the rest of your life. And it is a little bit true. You sort of have to feel so grateful for the fact that you have been part of this bubble that no one really gets to experience. It's just so, um, it's just such a, you know, unique and, and of course it's, you know, through so much hard work and all of that sort of stuff, but you are in this unique position and, and very, very few people get to the top of their sport. And so you have to sort of be like really grateful for all that it's given you, but then you have to recognize that you're not going to necessarily don't keep trying to chase those highs and those um, sort of feelings that you had in the rest of your life. You kind of have to recognize that it's just different. And the, and the best way for me, you know, I realized that I'm very passionate about helping athletes and advocating on their behalf. And that made me still feel like I was giving back to sport that had given me so much. And, you know, it, it sort of it really eased the transition hugely. Um, and I'm also very passionate about helping athletes with career transition. So I guess it kind of came full circle. And now I feel, um, I feel like, you know, it probably took a couple of years, but this, this transition, even though I was doing, you know, jobs and I was doing this, the, the, the mindset of the transition still takes some time. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> the second question, uh, the next question was, what advice would you give to other athletes trying to juggle training commitments with their career outside sport? Hmm. It's very tricky. So as I explained, I was basically an athlete while I was a student, um, not while I was working. So I retired from swimming after the London Games and I started full-time work at the beginning of 2013, sort of a matter of months later. But I think I have some comments on this. Um, firstly, and these, I mean, I, I was also studying law and international relations. I was doing a combined degree the whole time I was at, um, oh, I was swimming. And there were things that definitely, definitely helped make that, you know, a success. Um, I guess the first comment I would make is that I, obviously swimming is an individual sport and I think it's different for team sports. Um, I'm not, well, not different. I think it's just potentially harder to manage because I know that you don't have a lot of flexibility with when you could do a gym session for example because you do it all together whereas you know I spoke to my coach and said look it doesn't really suit me to do the gym session at 10 a.m when the rest of the squad's doing it can I do it in my lunch hour from uni and that was totally fine you know so I think that there's differences between team and individual sports but I would say that the most important thing if you want to have a career or study while you're an elite athlete Communication is essential and communication across every stakeholder group that you have. So if you're at university, you have to communicate with every single one of your professors. At the beginning of every semester, I went up to every professor and I know this is, you know, most people, the professors don't know who they are. You know, you're in a huge classroom. They don't individually know you. I made sure I went up to every professor at the beginning of every semester and introduced myself and said, um, you know, look, I'm so excited about your class. I mean, people are also only human. So I always made it sound like, and I was, you know, super interested in their subject. Um, I'm so interested in taking this class. Um, I'm a swimmer. I compete on the Paralympic team and I've got um, this meet during the course of this semester, which means that I'm not going to be here from week seven to 10. You know, I, I usually missed a lot of uni. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know, and you know, the university has been so fantastic and it's not going to make it any additional work for you, but I just thought I'd let you know. And Everyone is then, you know, once you've made the connection and you feel like that person feels like they've got a vested interest, then they really, I, in my experience, bent over backwards to make make it possible for me to do well at uni and also have the sporting career that I want. So that's just one example. Um, 